What's up, chess player? Welcome to the Journey to Grandmaster, the place where you can improve every aspect of uh, your chess game. And in today's video, you're gonna learn so much that is the most instructive and the most crazy game I have played in all history of this channel. But unfortunately, my video actually just got collapsed and I have lost the entire first part of the video. I still have the second one, so you're gonna enjoy it so much because the ending of this game is absolutely incredible but here i'm gonna just comment you through the game what has happened here so my opponent is playing this symmetrical greenfield defense i was actually expecting the king's indian defense and i wanted to play my b3 line but well it never happened so d5 i played the move c4 because i wanted this game to be more interesting and well of course more instructive for you guys i have played against a very strong opponent 2500 rated player so from the very beginning, I felt, well, that's going to be a tough fight. And when he played so many moves so fast, you can see that he's not thinking about his moves at all. Well, I was confused because I was thinking, like, what a monster I am playing against. So that was very scary for me. And he played this A A5 line, which I wasn't aware of here because I knew that there are queen b6 lines, I knew that he can take on c4 and then queen takes and so on. But A5 was a complete surprise for me. And he's putting some pressure on my position. He wants to play a4, attack my queen, and I played knight, f knight c3. I want to develop my uh, pieces because you remember the development is the key to success. But he plays a4 anyway, and I was very puzzled by this move because it turns out now if I take the pawn on a4, he takes on c4, I take it back, he has the move b5 and he is basically winning the piece. So that is not an option. So I was thinking about the move queen to b4 because now after knight a6, I have queen takes a4 and the knight is pinned. So that works. And now I'm showing that knight takes a4 is not an option for me at all. So finally, I decided that yeah, queen b4 should be the option because I attack the b7 pawn in case of takes, I can always take it back. And I keep an eye as well on the e7 pawn. And if knight a6, well, I still take on a4, the knight is pinned, so that doesn't work. So, but I still felt like, okay, I'm playing against a very strong player here, and that is the first time he really actually started to think about the position. And here where the whole story begins, because, well, this game, I mean, you have never, probably never see anything like that. You are going to be so amazed, I can guarantee you just wait for it to happen. So my opponent really took a deep thought here, uh, thinking what he's going to do. Because, well, you have to figure out a plan for yourself. Like, how do you continue the development? You have your bishop on c8. I just realized I can do my arrows uh, now, and I love to do it so much for you guys to help you explain. So here I was telling about this bishop on g2 that... If he ever takes on c4 and plays b5, which seems like a desirable thing, later on you're going to see that is exactly what he did, then the c6 pawn is going to be a huge weakness because my bishop is controlling the entire diagonal and playing c5 is pretty difficult. And well, I don't know how I did it, but I actually just uh, predicted the future very good because that is exactly what happened. Here I'm explaining that if he does nothing, I'm just developing my pieces, bishop f4, rooks to the center, and I have just a perfect development. And for him, it's not clear how to continue. And also, this pawn on a4 is always a liability. You, you must constantly watch out for it. And yeah, that's going to be difficult to somehow uh, survive for this pawn. So after a very long thought, he finally decided to take on c4. And... That helps me in terms of my center, uh, center because I have two central pawns now and he has only one. And of course, once he takes on c4, I always want to play e4. I want to go on. And yeah, that wasn't that uh, simple to implement because he started to attack immediately. So let's uh, wait for him to play d takes c. Yeah, finally he does it. So my queen takes it, but now I thought maybe knight takes e4 is also an option, because if he plays b5, I actually have the knight to c5 move, and the knight seems to be great on c5. But the problem with that line is that he is going knight d5 and attacking my queen, and then everything is protected, my queen has to go back, he also has knight a6 just to exchange those 
um, those knights there, so I thought that doesn't seem to be a great option. No, yeah, now I'm noticing that knight d5 is a problem. So I decided it's better to take on c4, and now a4 is still hanging, so he plays b5. My queen just goes away, that is the best square, because now I'm in the center and controlling everything, and I want to play e4 and just try to destroy him. So he plays b4. He wants to be as active as possible. His idea is that if my knight goes away, like knight d1, he has bishop f5 and e4 is no longer possible, so he wins tremendous amount of time. And if I play knight e4, he still has bishop f5 at some point, either immediately or after capture. And then, yeah, once again, he wins time. But I figured out, well, I have to play knight e4 because knight d1 is incredibly passive. It allows him to win so much time, be very active, and that is not what I should be going for. So knight e4, remember, you always go uh, forward first, and only if it doesn't work at all, then you consider some passive moves. So I'm going for it. Now he has a choice. He has knight x e4, queen takes, and bishop f5, or he has bishop f5 immediately. In every case, I achieve my... Uh, biggest goal, which is to play e4. Once I do that, I have a total control of the center, and that's great for me. So he decided to take and then play bishop f5. And now I'm thinking, okay, where should my queen uh, go? Because I anticipate this move bishop f5, and I'm noticing that I can actually go to h4. And that is a very promising uh, square for the queen to go because. Not only I prepare the move e4, but I also have knight g5. Very interesting opportunity to just threaten and checkmate in one there. And if he plays h6, I can uh, step back and then attack the h6 pawn. So I'm telling uh, you guys here, unfortunately you can see it, uh, but I remember me telling you that his attack wasn't really great along the queen side. He hasn't achieved much. Whereas I do have some interesting prospects here. And he also has a weakness on c6, a very weak pawn there. Only if he ever opens up the diagonal, like a3, and then the bishop on g7 is great, that could help. But I'm the first one. I'm creating immediately those threats. They, this is just more serious because knight uh, g5 was a threat. And he carelessly played knight d7, I would say. Because Yes, after knight g5, he has knight f6 or h6. Anyway, he is kind of fine, but he completely missed the fact that I have I have e4 move now, and the bishop is under attack. The bishop doesn't have a lot of good squares. So yeah, now I'm in the process, in deep process of calculation those moves, uh, trying to figure out how to do it. And yeah, I'm noticing that I can actually play e4, and the bishop is in trouble. Uh, so bishop f6 is probably the, the move he is relying on because that's creating a counter threat and trying to push my queen away because otherwise he must play bishop e6. I play knight g5, creating a double threat. I'm attacking the h7 pawn and the bishop. He can't ignore checkmate threat in one at all. He must play like h5 and then I'm taking on e6 and his position is totally busted. I mean, pawn structure is compromised. I have a pair of bishops that just game over basically. So after e4, he must play bishop f6. That was my conclusion. And then I started to calculate those variations, like what's going to happen next. I figured out I have either bishop g5 or knight g5. Knight g5 seems to be the best option because once again, I'm threatening the checkmate. So I'm in the process of calculating the line till the end because I figured out after e4, uh, he can play bishop f6. Now I go knight f g5, he takes it. I go bishop takes g5 and attacking the e7 pawn. Yeah, now I decided that the variation is too uh, difficult for you to understand without the arrow, so I start doing it. So bishop takes g5, I play bishop takes d5, attacking the e7 pawn, and black has this move f6. And now both of the bishops are hanging. The bishop on f5 is hanging and the bishop on g5. Now bishop h6 is not that great attacking the rook because he has the move h5. And now the queen basically doesn't have any squares to go. That was my biggest problem, queen h5, just bishop g6 with the tempo. And then my bishop is basically uh, caught on h6. So I thought about taking the bishop on f5, he takes on g5, and I can take it uh, back with my queen. So after a deep thought here, you can see a great number of variations. I finally concluded that e4 is the right move for me. It's the most active move. And I mean, if I'm not losing anything immediately, that is definitely a move I should go for.
because now, like I said, bishop e6 is not possible at all. So he was calculating it for quite a long time, but then he concluded bishop f6 absolutely must be played. And then I once again was uh, re reconsidering my options because, well, I figured out I have a lot of time. Uh, it feels like I'm close to getting my goal, winning against a very, very strong opponent. But I was never so wrong because this game, I mean, it has so many turnarounds. I thought I was completely winning, then I was completely losing, then once again win. I mean, that is just crazy. So, but that's all coming for you, and go you're going to see my life emotions in the second part, so please wait for it. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I, I was literally uh, sweating. I mean, I, I, I couldn't handle this pressure anymore. It felt like a real tournament game. Okay. Meanwhile, my opponent is finally ready to play bishop f6. I anticipate this move to happen any second soon. And I'm just recalculating my variation in the process here. But everything uh, seems to work there. And yeah, bishop f6. Now, bishop g5 doesn't make a lot of sense because the biggest thing that I can get is after bishop e6 to take his bishop, but he can just take it back with the pawn, and then I never have my knight g5 idea, which was basically my main idea. So instead, I'm playing knight g5 in the first place. Then, yeah, I once again want to recalculate those variations. And I conclude that the bishop is going to be so great from g2, knight g5 is basically opening up the bishop, so it's really, really great for me. And he doesn't have any choice. That is why another advantage of this move, that I'm absolutely sure at what I'm getting. Now I have a choice between taking with the queen and with the bishop, but if I take with the queen, I don't develop a new piece. And you remember the golden rule is to try to develop all of your pieces as fast as possible and as active as possible. So bishop g5 fits this goal uh, much more. I'm just a little bit worried about the move f6. That is why I was yeah, somehow recalculating the options again and again. But it seems like bishop g5 works because I always have just taken on f5 and then taken on g5. And even if I don't have anything better than that, this variation is still good for me. That was the first variation I calculated in the very beginning. Then I was considering so many other options, but just to conclude that the initial thought was the correct one. And it happens in my chess career so often that I'm seeing the right move kind of immediately, in the first like three to five seconds. Then, if it's a tournament game, a classical one, I start to calculate for like 20 minutes, crazy lines, I mean, very, very long. And then I decide for something else. And that move that I calculated for so, such a long time is just a huge, huge blunder, or it's missing something very important. In every case, the moves that I have seen in the first seconds was actually the correct one. And because I don't trust my intuition enough, I don't go for it, and then, well, I pay my price for it. Tell me know, uh, let me know in the comments, please, if you ever experienced something similar. Well, meanwhile, he actually played f6. Now I'm seeing that I can not only take on f5, but can also take on f6. Because in this case, the bishop on f5 is still hanging, and the pawn on e7 is still hanging. So. After rook takes f6, pawn takes f6, if he takes with the pawn, I have bishop takes c6. And it seems to be great, but in the end of the day, I make the conclusion that I actually just exchanged those pawns, and c6 was a horrible weakness, and after the exchange, he doesn't have it, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. So bishop takes f6, I like less, and I finally come to a conclusion that I should take just on f5 and go on from there, because this way, his pawn on c6 still remains to be a weakness and a target for me, and it's very difficult for him to play c5 to ever make it possible. That is why it's, it's, it's a long-term huge, huge weakness for him. So I'm finally going for e takes f. Now he's taking my bishop, he has no choice. Now I'm thinking that queen e4 might actually be also an interesting option, because after takes I have queen e6 check, the king has to go away, and then I'm taking the pawn on c6, and not only the rook is hanging, but also the knight on d7. The only way to save it is knight uh, is rook to h7, but then I face the similar issue as before, that he doesn't have the c6 pawn weakness anymore, and the material is still equal. And I have the d4 uh, isolated pawn, so what have I achieved? Pretty much nothing. So at the end of the day, I decide that it's better to take on g5 instead and then still have that c6 pawn as a target. 
So that is what I'm going for. Yeah, queen g4 is another opportunity, but after rook takes f5, bishop c6, we are basically back to square one. So I'm taking it. Now taking with the pawn is not possible because of the pin, so rook f5 is the only move. Now I need to figure out a move for my queen to go, and it seems like e3-1 is the most reasonable one because it's putting pressure on e7, it's having a uh, uh, queen e6 check uh, possible, and of course uh, I'm still attacking the c6 pawn. So at this point, I felt like it's almost over there. I'm just, I just need to develop, to develop my rooks to finish my development, and then he's gonna be busted. He has so many weaknesses. My bishop is stronger, and I had no idea what is expecting for me in this crazy game because it was very far from a, a smooth victory here. So yeah, I just made a conclusion that this whole queenside attack wasn't successful for Black at all. All he achieved was create a weakness for himself. And yes, I made like a thousand moves with a queen, which is normally what I uh, specifically tell you not to do, just one move and one piece. But well, I had to make all of those moves. In most of the cases, my queen was under attack or I tried to activate it to make it, to make it more active and create threats. So well, I thought, the queen moves are justified. So now I'm calculating whether I should go for queen e6 check and king e8 and, and then bishop takes e6. The great thing is the knight on d7 is under attack and well knight c5 is not possible. The knight, the only reasonable square is to go to f8 attacking the queen but in this case I can just play queen e4, the bishop is still protected and everything is great. Now, if the knight goes anywhere away, not to f8, then no problems. I can even just play d5 and enjoy my extra pawn. Once my queen is back to e4 in the knight f8 variation, the rook can't attack me, so I don't have any troubles. And I was about to play queen e6, but then I suddenly noticed after king h8 and bishop c6, he has rook f6 idea. He's attacking my queen and the bishop behind the queen. Now, of course, I have to take the knight on d7. I don't, I don't lose any material. In fact, I'm a pawn up. But he's taken the uh, bishop on c6 with his rook, and then we are coming into some kind of endgame, let's say queen takes d8, rook takes d8, where his rooks are more active and I have an isolated pawn on d4. So I concluded that is not how I want uh, to win the game. Actually, it felt like I'm losing the entire advantage. So I concluded that queen e6 check and winning the pawn is actually a trap for me. That is not the way I should go. And then I noticed that I can just continue my development, like I suggested. That is always the golden principle. I'm attacking the e7 pawn. And if the knight goes away, that was my problem, that he plays like knight b6 and knight d5. And seems like it's a good option for him, because if I take on e7, he has queen takes d4. The queen is very active, the material is equal again. And, well, he survives pretty good. And I was scared about that, but finally I realized that actually he cannot go anywhere with his knight because of my bishop h3 move. And I am just uh, controlling the entire diagonal and winning an exchange. He can never es escape of it because I always have this queen e6 check no matter how he attacks me. So once I discovered that, it was much simpler for me and I, I concluded that, okay, if I just develop my rooks normally, rook goes to e1, the second one goes to c1, I'm putting even more pressure and there is nothing that I can do here. Yeah, so here I'm finally noticing this bishop h3. I was completely blind to this idea because he just played rook c8 and somehow that didn't cross my mind. It's not something that is, uh, yeah, that, uh, that often happens to you. So once I realized it, rook e1 was a very simple move for me because if black doesn't have any active opportunities, then he has to defend passively, which is rook to f7. And if he does that, then it felt like I achieved a lot. Like if he has to go back, then it's definitely like I improved my rook and he is just going back. So it can be bad for me. I can improve my second rook, develop it, uh, create another thread, and then yeah, Basically, the problems are still uh, going bigger and bigger for black. And so I really liked where the game is going. So far, I guess at this point, after the move rook c1, so now rook f7, rook c1, I said, well, my position is great. I mean, I'm just, just controlling everything. If you look at e each and every one of my pieces, that is stronger 
that each and every one of his pieces. And he has a lot of weaknesses. His pawn structure is worse. I have a strong bishop against a weak knight. Like everything is perfect. But I had like millions of positions like that before in my life, completely winning. And then I have managed to spoil the entire advantage away. So it's too early to celebrate the victory. I have to still uh, really focus on my opponent's ideas. Most importantly, on my opponent's counterplay. And that is the biggest mistake that pretty much every chess player makes, at least at some point in his career, just forgetting about your opponent's counterplay. And you absolutely need to always think about it, no matter how great you think your position is, it's never too late to spoil your game. And I can tell you like a thousand examples from my chess career and even recent chess games like this year, I have spoiled so many winning games. So it's never too late to uh, lose your game. Please remember it uh, throughout all of your games. So yeah, I was careful about that. I remembered that rule and I thought, okay, well, I'm not gonna repeat my mistakes. I'm gonna be just very active here, just doing everything great, but I felt, I felt just completely, I made so many mistakes here. Up to here, I'm playing near to perfect. And then starts something very unexplainable because my opponent plays knight f6. And yes, I can just grab the pawn on c6, and that's actually possible. I'm starting to calculate the, uh, the ideas, but I'm noticing that he is creating a threat of knight g4. And that's going to be a double attack. That's going to be, yeah, very scary, actually, because the f2 pawn is hanging. And f2 is a, it, the worst pawn to lose in terms of defending your key. Then I thought, well, maybe I can survive that because my bishop is still controlling that long diagonal. And if I place my queen on e6 and then play bishop d5, just attacking the rook twice, he has this knight xf2, knight h3, one check, but I just go king g2. And as long as I control the entire long diagonal, he can't create any threats for me. So I thought that variation should work. But later on, I have noticed that he can actually sacrifice a whole rook or maybe an exchange and then play queen takes d4. So, Bishop takes c6, knight g4, queen goes to e6. Now he takes on c6 with the rook. I take back with the rook, threaten rook c8, winning his queen. But he has queen takes d4. And suddenly he's an exchange down, but he's creating a huge, huge threat for me. Uh, queen takes f2 and queen takes h2 checkmate. I have rook c8 check, but that is just one check, king g7, and I don't have any follow-up checks. I hope you understand my variation. That is something uh, similar here to what I'm showing. So. I concluded that, yeah, maybe I can also take with the rook first, but the situation doesn't really change in any, any significant matter here because knight g4 is still possible. I go queen e6, now he can exchange and then play queen to d4. Or I also thought maybe he can just ignore the rook completely, sacrifice the entire rook and play queen takes d4 at some point because uh, still this threat. On f2, he's attacking three times and I have no defenders at all except for my king. That was so scary. I mean, that was literally like a checkmate coming for me. So after a long thought here, you can see that I don't have that much time on the clock anymore. I concluded that it's better just to stop the entire counterplay. Because, well, the golden rule, I said it myself, watch out for your opponent's counterplay. So I played h3 here and just stopped the entire uh, uh, the entire attack. Yeah, you can see a great number of arrows here, but the main point is d4 pawn is not a good pawn to lose because queen is coming and then f2, f2 is just horrible to lose. You, you should never do it. It's like the most important pawn in terms of your king's defense. So I'm playing h3 because it's very important for me to cover the g4 square. And also the king is now having this h2 luft, for itself and the king would be very secure. Even if I lose the f2 pawn, I'm gonna be fine for quite a few moves if I manage to create some really dangerous uh, threats in the meantime. And then uh, the only active move he has with his knight is knight to d5. And the knight on d5 seems to really be great, but it's actually doing not much. It has no penetration squares. You can notice that c3 is covered, e3 is covered, f4 is covered, so the knight doesn't go anywhere at all. And I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, so that is why I'm coming to its conclusion. And then c6 pawn is still hanging and queen e6 is still available for me. He has all the same problems, but I don't have to face this very annoying counterplay. So following the golden rule, I went for it. 
And so far, once again, I'm doing everything correctly, surprisingly, but I do have time travel now. I mean, once you are coming very low on time, doesn't matter uh, how, how good your position is, if there are some tricks for your opponent and your opponent is strong, he's able to use it, you might end up in big, big trouble. And that is exactly what happened in this game. So I actually regret now seeing my, my time here that I was uh, spending so much time calculating those variations early on because I calculated everything great there, but now I really need those extra uh, seconds to make sure that nothing dangerous is happening because it seems like I have everything under control. And looking at this position, you can never imagine that like in 10 moves, maybe in 15 moves, it was completely lost for white. I mean, can you imagine that? He plays rook c7. Now I have a choice again. I can win the pawn in two different ways. I can play bishop takes d5 and rook takes c6. If I take with the bishop, he cannot take with the queen. So he's basically obliged to take with the pawn. Then rook takes, queen takes, and queen d5. I'm a pawn up and I'm still pinning the rook on f7. That's great. But I thought he still has some counterplay along the c file. The f2 pawn still might be weak. So something like queen c2 is pretty annoying. So I concluded I don't want to do it. And I also have another option, which is rook takes c6 instead, winning the pawn, and the knight on d5 is still under attack, so I went for it. He takes it on c6, I'm taking it, and the knight is still hanging, so the knight has to spend yet another tempo to get to security, and I do have this isolated pawn, but I mean, that's an extra pawn. What could be better than an extra pawn? Also, I have a bishop. And well, the position is pretty open, so the bishop should be stronger than the knight. I, I can take on a4, I say it, but I don't really like it because queen is coming to d4 and the queen in the center of the board is extremely, extremely active. Whereas I have my queen on a4, basically pretty stupid there. So I concluded I have to play d5, the pawn is protected and I still attack the a4 pawn. Now he plays a3, he doesn't want to lose the pawn. I also don't want to lose a pawn, so I play b3, and now the b4 pawn is hanging. Now, at this point, you are going to enjoy the second game of this, uh, the uh, second part of this game live, because I have changed my battery, and now my video was perfectly fine, and you're going to see all of the live emotions, because up to here, I played, let's say, a perfect game. Afterwards, what has happened, I can never explain it, because something absolutely amazing and absolutely impossible happened. You're going to learn so much. So yeah, just enjoy it. Okay, so let's see whether black can come up with something because b4 is a weakness. This knight is not going anywhere because I stopped the only counterplay source here for the knight. Otherwise, every piece is very passive for him. Yeah, he's trying to maybe at least protect the pawn. I need to come up with a smart next move. Because he is pretty solid, I have to admit. Let me play queen c5. That feels like a reasonable move because I attack this pawn, I attack this pawn. He can play queen d6, but... Okay, knight d7. Queen d7 is actually pretty smart. I feel like I want to control this diagonal still. I'm gonna play queen d4. That is a very good square in terms of controlling as many squares as possible. And also it's important that this knight can't really attack the queen at all. I guess d6 is a threat at some point because I want to play bishop d5 and win an exchange. And maybe I also want to play rook e4 and just pick up this pawn for free. In every case, I always must be very careful with my f2 pawn, not to allow him to somehow get counterplay. But even in that case, if I ever need to sacrifice it, I have this h2 square where the king is in safety at least for a few moves. That is also good to know. Yeah, knight goes back. Now I can't actually play rook e4. That's, that's a pity for me. So maybe it's time to move the rook here. Rook e6 also is interesting. Yeah, rook e6 is actually great. Because I don't allow him to do anything at all. This, this rook can't move uh, because e7 pawn is hanging. And the knight doesn't really have any active squares to go forward. I'm threatening rook b6. And the queen also doesn't... Ah, oh, wait. The queen actually has an active square. Although I have rook c6 in this case. 
And even if he does achieve that, it's just a check. Like I said, I have king h2. That should be fine as long as I have this h3 pawn. Okay, so I feel very optimistic about my position. I'm a pawn up. I have a bishop, which is, yeah, as long as I play d5, not that great, but still has some prospects. Okay, he wants to place the uh, the knight here to be stable, but I do have rook d6 now. Yeah, at least his rook is opened, and maybe he's going for this check, but once again, I would take a risk probably and allow him this check. Because what else? I mean, he can go here, attack this guy, but meanwhile, I'm gonna play rook b8 and attack the knight. That can be bad. I also have rook c6, but. Yeah, actually, rook c6 is a reasonable idea. If he goes back to protect, then I have d6. And if he takes, I have bishop d5. But I really want to take the pawn. I mean, let me go for it. It's a more interesting option, a more active one. So I'm going to take the risk of doing that. Maybe some kind of knight d6 is going to follow up here, and I'm not going to be happy about that. OK, he's not going for it, because now knight d6 is not really great. I have, I have rook b8 check, and he has to play uh, rook f8. And then it's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, threatened to get, a checkmate, to get checkmated, and that is all I need. If you place queen one ah, okay, queen b2. That is actually very clever. That is very clever. I haven't thought about it at all. Because now this pawn is hanging. No, queen b2, yeah. Queen b2 is great. How do I deal with it? I cannot take it. Wow, that's fantastic. And I also don't have any time to figure it out. But uh, feels like I have to play f4. Because I absolutely have to stop this rook from coming. And I cannot take the queen. He, he can take, and they, he's going to have a very strong pawn. But we, meanwhile, I hope I'm going to be in time to create some threats for him. Or at least have my rook behind to stop that pawn. Yeah, but queen b2. Yeah, I shouldn't have allowed that. I should have just played rook c6. So always watch out for your opponent's counterplay. That's essential no matter how much advantage you have, no matter what's going on on the board. Watch out for your opponent's counterplay. And now he's going for an ID6, but now I have Rook. He wants to go to the endgame. He wants to go for the endgame. Maybe he's right. Do I have something else? Yeah, I don't see it have to go for that but yeah he's right it's it's really scary here five i want to have a chance to to grab this pawn maybe and give a few checks but my bishop is now very passive also he might come up yeah i don't see i don't like where it goes to be honest because this pawn is also incredibly strong and with the rook i say that i have a chance to block it but without have allowed that. That was a huge, huge mistake. Let's see if I can figure out a way. Also, I have left myself too little time to really think and calculate something. This knight can really be powerful. I needed to sacrifice my pawn at the right point and win that exchange. Okay, maybe I have h4, h5 idea, then in h3, and then my bishop is free to go. That would be something. But he needs like two moves, and then he's gonna promote his queen. And my bishop actually has no way to stop, stop his promotion. It has to be somewhere here, but I have two pawns standing on this diagonal. There is no chance gonna disappear and his knight is also great it's like he is having everything on the dark squares exactly what he needs yeah he's going away going away okay let me go for h4 
I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm going to be too slow, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm going to have some counterplay. It's very difficult. Because he's not going to allow me to have any source of counterplay. Wait, I, yeah, I still cannot take never because I don't have bishop before. He made sure it's never possible for me. He takes, what do I do? Queen h8. I feel like my queen is just too far away from the action. Let me play h5 instead, because if he takes, I at least play... Wait, but he has queen b2 now. Queen b2, and I don't have anything at all. No, I, I must have played queen h8. I absolutely must have played that. Okay, if I take here, queen takes e5, takes a2. Uh, actually, I can take. Yeah, but he just takes back, and I don't have time. My bishop can never stop it. Yeah, I, I must have played queen h8. I don't have anything. My bishop is also pinned. It's just horrible. But queen h8 also doesn't really feel like it helps me a lot. He plays in d7, I take it, he plays queen b2. What do I do? Let me take. I have my only hope that he doesn't have any immediate checks if he allows me now to take. Like he plays a1 uh, queen and I play g takes h. That is so unexpected. I, I had everything under control. Now I'm not. I even don't have, I never have this check opportunity. If it would be possible, that would help me a lot. Maybe I should have played not queen, should have played queen g8 instead. Yeah, I have plenty of extra pawns, but it doesn't help me at all. Now he's going to play king c7. I'm going to play queen e6. Actually, queen h8 is not the end of the world because I have bishop h8. Ah, okay, knight d8. Really missed that. And yeah, now I don't have anything at all. Yeah, I should have played queen, queen g8 in the first place. Maybe that was actually a draw. Or maybe maybe he would have the same idea. Anyway, I will have my, one more tempo. Now, it doesn't make any difference that I have won those pawns. It doesn't help me at all. Yeah, somehow I was talking so much about the importance of controlling your opponent's counterplay, and in the end of the day, I missed it. Okay, now I see one check. But he just has six. But I do have another check. Ah, no. Yeah, I actually win a pawn. Wait, he blundered. <laughs> that is a crazy, crazy game. He blundered the A2 pawn completely. Wow. I mean, I guess he just did the same mistake, basically. He forgot to check my counterplay. <laughs> and now it's getting back because I'm going to have two extra pawns and I'm going to be having a winning position. No, I mean, that is not a top-level chess you might have expected from this game between two 2,500-rated players. But, well, we are also human beings. We also make mistakes. Maybe it's also inspiring for you that if we are making mistakes, that then if you have, like, 1,500-rated or whatever rating you have right now, it's completely fine. And I can guarantee you it's completely fine to make mistakes. Everybody does it. Grandmasters as well. Blunder all of possible stuff every day. It's just that they are more stable. They do it not that often as I do, not as often as you do. Okay, let's see if I can now win the game. I have this B pawn, which I really want to push as long as possible. And I have here two passers, but if I push that, then my king is not that stable anymore. And he wants to create some threats with his queen and his knight. And it can be actually very, very dangerous. If his knight ever goes to g4, that would be a nightmare. Okay, does it make any sense for me to give some checks? Maybe it is, because I'm going to improve my queen's position. Because on a2, it doesn't really... Although it covers the b2 square, because if I ever go anywhere, he's going to play... Queen. Does he threat? Yeah, he threatens to play knight f4. Then if I take, he takes, and if I play b4, he's gonna take all of my pawns. Okay, let me give a few checks just to get some time. 
that's yeah always a good strategy and then i hope to figure out how to continue maybe a7 is a good square Maybe not. I mean, I wanted to play queen to e3, saying that the queen is very stable here. Can't play queen b2. The knight is hanging. I'm protecting the f4 pawn. I just want to cover everything and stabilize my position. And then I want to push my pawn if I have a chance. Yeah, that is, <laughs> this is the craziest game I have in, in recent days and weeks. Firstly, I thought it's completely winning. There is nothing to, to, to play. Then I, I thought that's completely losing because he could have just promoted the queen. Now I'm winning again, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to win the game. Okay, so what happens if I play b4 check? I have bishop h6, uh, bishop h3. Let me go for it. Knight f5, maybe? But. As long as, yeah, I don't know, queen d3 maybe is a stable square. As long as I stabilize everything, it would be good. Also, I guess he's going towards this g4 square where he's actually going to be very, very dangerous. Yeah, he's going for it. But maybe I have bishop. Ah, oh, wait, I'm losing the pawn. I'm losing the pawn. I have to play something like queen e2 cover the g4 square then maybe even bishop f3 if he plays queen f5 because if he manages to do that then it can be very dangerous queen d4 check would be annoying i can't allow his knight to be activated yeah knight g4 is still very annoying so maybe i have bishop f3 now yeah the knight goes back to, to f5 now right how do i stop that very dangerous. Queen f2. Feels pretty passive, to be honest. G4. Yeah, also not great. Let me go for it. Yeah, knight and queen is a very cool combination in terms of creating threats for the king. Even though I have a bishop and a queen and a pawn on g3, very important pawn. Without this pawn, I wouldn't be able to control everything. He still creates so many threats. Yeah, it's actually very annoying. How do I how do I deal with it? I don't see a move. I don't see a move at all. I mean, uh, uh, knight e3 was threatened and it felt like a perpetual check there if I just play b5, knight e3, and then uh, queen goes from here to here, and I don't see any way to escape it. I play that. Open to survive here. No, here I forgot about queen d2 check. But maybe it's still the best square for me to go. I mean, without the time, it's so difficult to handle those threats. But at least after queen d2, I have, I have bishop e2. Knight g4, I have queen f3. Knight h2. I'm curious if I can play king g2. Queen takes e2, check. I have queen f2. Here I have to play that, right? g4. Uh, king f3, knight h2, king g2, queen takes, and I have queen f2 check. Uh, sorry, queen f2 covering the check. Now the knight is hanging, so if he goes away, I'm just taking the knight. If he exchange it, then I'm have I'm having this passer and this passer, but it's probably a draw. Okay, knight d1, that's something different. Why can't I play here? Yeah, because he's pushing my... Well, here I don't achieve anything, so let me go for this one. Very dangerous, but he is pushing me away now, and he is gonna have this check. That is, I can I can actually lose this game. But wait, after queen c3, I am not obliged to go there. I have king to g2, and then after knight is 3 I have king to f2, and then all checks are covered. I like it. Such a crazy game. 
I hope you guys support me. Hit the like button if you do, because I feel overwhelmed with this game. I feel I feel crazy to be honest, because so many threats when you need to deal with those knight and queen, it's very, very tough. I feel like it's a real tournament game for somehow I'm I'm so stressed out. Normally I'm very calm because I mean that's just a training game. But if I already achieved that and somehow got from completely lost position, I want to continue. Okay, what can I do from here? Yes, I have to protect. Does it make any sense to give a check? Yes, not really. Let me play. Wait, he has knight c3. It, he has knight c3. Let me repeat the position. Get a little bit of time. So king g4, knight a3, king. Oh, that's dangerous. I mean, he's threatening knight c3 now. I play queen b5 or something. But okay, let me let me go for it. Knight c3. At least I get to exchange the queens and get to this interesting opening where I'm not really uh risking losing and maybe I have a chance with those two passers. Two distant passers, very important. Actually, here I have two connected passers, so I have three overall. So maybe maybe that crazy position would be would be good for me in terms of winning. Okay, he's not going for that. In F3, why not? Don't see any checks at all. But maybe he has some calm move like knight c2 and threaten, yeah, threaten and everything. But why can't I just play queen d3? Knight d4. I can play king to f2 and I don't see any checks. Yeah, but he can just win the pawn. That is very sad. Okay, let me give some checks. That would allow me to win time. 94 is a big, big spread. Maybe I can actually even just push my bishop at some point. If if there is no fork threatened, of course. Because then after 94, maybe I can get away with that. Although very, very scary. But at least, okay, I'm going to give some proper checks now to win as much time as I can. And I keep in mind that I have this 94, uh, queen d3 move. But then 94, he goes away and queen b4. and I'm just one pawn up, and he still has his threats, so it's not an ideal thing for me. Okay, now I can give a check and protect the bishop. That's great. And also protect the pawn. That is something I really like. Maybe I can just play b5 now. Knight d4. Knight d I have king f2. He can take, but probably with the help of checks, I can win that knight. Okay, now not really. Yes, b5, knight d4, king f2, knight b5, and how do I win? I don't have a single check. It is very sad. I don't have time, so let's go for it. Maybe after king, the knight d4, I have to be brave and play king g4. Yeah, that might be the solution, because the pawn is protected and he doesn't have any checks. And I don't have any time. I mean, I have to start playing faster, but I mean, it's so scary. If I play faster, I might as well just lose in one move. But I like that finally my pawn is protected. That is something great. Wow, what a crazy game. It's move 69 already. And uh, I have no idea how this game might end. Ooh, crazy, crazy. Let me let me try to finish it. Let me try to win this game. Ad4, King G4. I don't see anything he can do. And I don't see anything else apart from my D4 right now. I have 13 seconds. That's crazy. Wait. Knight d4, what am I talking about? King g4 of my bishop is hanging. Okay, he's not going for it for some reason. What do I do? I mean, two seconds, I, I, I just lost the control completely. But I hope bishop d3 is fine. 
with knight e1, I have queen, queen, uh, king g4, and queen d1, I have bishop e2. Back. Yes, that way I'm covering everything. So that was just an intuition move to, to just make sure that everything is solid. If he plays queen d1, what do I do? I guess. Oh my god. Does he have any checks? Hopefully, it doesn't. He has queen d1, but that one I can cover. Wow, I mean, that is absolutely crazy. Knight is free, I can still take it. The most important thing, he doesn't have a checkmate from here, anyhow. If I can survive the checks, if the checks are over, then it will be fine. Okay, queen is three. Is that a move? Queen is two, I mean. No, knight is three. Knight is three, king f3. I hope, I hope that's the end of the checks. Because now I attack both. He absolutely cannot exchange. And knight is three, I have king f3. And then everything is hanging. Queen h1, I just take the knight. Oh my god, I, I think I'm going to win this game. <laughs> that is fantastic. I never expect, ex expected to feel so excited about the training game. Tell me in the comments, please, how you feel about training games. Do you feel some pressure or does it like, okay, it's just a friendly game, let's just play it and have some time? Because here I really feel that stressful, almost close to the real tournament game, and that is very unexpected for me. Because this game is so intense, he, he is attacking me for the last like 25 moves without any chances. Now I'm finally taking the knight and I feel, I feel more, more calm, but yeah, I mean, with the knight, without the knight on the board, <laughs> It's it's not scary. I mean, he might have one hundred checks, but it's not dangerous. I know that. Wait, actually, I have to be careful here because it should be two. Queen d five, king e three doesn't help because of queen c five, and if I go here, then queen uh, f five. It's also not great. Wait, and here the bishop is king. Oh, it actually doesn't really work. Maybe king e4 or something, but he has d5. Okay, I need to get some time. Well, king d4 is not a move now, right? Let me go here. Maybe I'm going to hide somewhere there. That would be the right strategy. I mean, even without the knight, it's somehow much more difficult than it should have been. Okay, now I'm finally in safety with my king. That should be all she wrote. Now I can just push my pawn to b6. Yeah, but then still, there's another check going on. Yeah, he's attacking. Maybe bishop e4 is a smart choice. Because this way I control the key diagonal and the pawn not under attack, so b6 is coming. You can throw away a pawn, didn't really change anything. I guess I'm gonna just take it. On. Every time I think it's over, he finds a new resource because here I don't achieve the move. The move um, b6. I have queen b2 check, but how does it help me? Yeah, it actually helps because afterwards I don't need to go to c6. I support my pawn and I can just go back with the bishop. Yeah, that is smart. It's very, very important to control the diagonal, and otherwise it push my pawn. Yeah, he finally resigns. I mean, what a relief. This is the craziest game I have in the recent weeks. 